So here we have a student perhaps doing their Duke of Edinburgh award. And what they're going to do is they're going to start at their camp, which is at uh, point A, and they're then going to move to their new overnight camp at point B. And this video is really looking at two things, distance and displacement. Now these are really similar, but there is a subtle difference between them. And it's because distance is a scalar quantity, whereas displacement is a vector. And that's really important. Although we often use these words interchangeably, they do have particular meanings. Now perhaps the route that this uh, person took was something a bit like this, as they maybe uh, walk around, they follow trails, they come to junctions, they cross over streams. And basically, this is the distance that they've walked. That's actually how far their legs have moved and the amount of metres that they've covered. And often this is quite, uh, you know, quite a big number. However, the displacement is the direct distance or the shortest distance from point A to point B. And when we measure the displacement, we don't just give the length in metres. We also think about the angle that this is, you know, perhaps uh, an angle that was measured in degrees. So because displacement is a vector, it must have a magnitude, a size, as well as an angle or direction. Now the other thing about displacement is that it can be both positive and negative. So let's imagine that this uh, quite tired walker now, they've got to their point B, they've got to their overnight camp, and they throw their compass up in the air. Well what we can do is maybe say that uh, their hand is at the kind of zero point, and anything above this is a positive displacement. So what that means is as they throw it up, we can maybe kind of think about how this uh, changes its displacement from their hand with time. And it might, you know, be 20 centimetres or half a metre. And as we kind of look at it as time goes on, we can record the displacement. And, and if it's above their hand, it's going to be positive. However, if they were to then drop it and it fell to the floor, anything below the hand level would then be a negative value of displacement. So what we can then do, and this is useful for loads of different scenarios, is we can maybe talk about, you know, something having a value of plus 0.2 of a metre, maybe in one direction, and if it then goes the other direction, it might have a value of minus 0.2 metres. And this is because it's a vector, and vectors can be both positive and negative, and sometimes this is really important. Now let's imagine it's day two of the expedition. The camp has had a good night's sleep at campsite B, and what they're going to do is they're going to do a big circular walk the next day. So what they do is, I'm going to try and draw a nice circle here, is they leave camp B, and they do a big circular walk. That's not too bad, is it? And this is maybe a distance of 20 kilometres, and it takes them five hours to do the whole route. Okay, so they're, they're, the distance that they walk is 20 kilometres, and five hours later, they arrive back at Camp B. Now, the thing is, although they've walked 20 kilometres, their displacement at the end is equal to zero kilometres, because it's, you know, no further away from where they started than where they were at the beginning. And this is where you've got to be quite careful about looking at things like distance and displacement. So, for example, if we want to know their average speed, their average speed is going to be equal to their total distance travelled over the total time, which in this case is going to be 20 kilometres over five hours, which I'm going to leave in kilometres per hour is just four kilometres per hour, which is a fairly good pace. If, however, we want to know their average velocity, and just be aware that we use V for speed and V for velocity, their velocity is going to be equal to uh, their total displacement over their total time, which is zero over five hours, which is just zero kilometres per hour. And in fact, it's the same for yourself. Provided you go to bed in the same bed that you woke up in, your total displacement over the whole of today, you know, if you go to school, if you're doing sport, whatever it might be, your average velocity on a day-to-day -day basis is normally about zero metres per second, because you end up where you started at the beginning. Your displacement is zero, and therefore your average velocity is zero. It is worth bearing in mind, if you've got something which is, uh, you know, moving, you've got to think about the distance and how that is different to the displacement. And if you know that, you can then work out things like the average speed or indeed the average velocity. So I hope that just helps add a little bit more information to this part of the course. Thank you.